Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today and in today's video we're going to be looking at the high yield abdominal x-rays which crop up in medical school final exams. So just a little bit about the medicine guide. So the medicine guide is a free online YouTube channel which aims to support medical students all throughout their entire journey at medical school. So I've made videos on how to be successful in the pre-clinical years, how to be successful during the clinical years, how to get the most out of GP placements, how to get the most out of hospital placements, how to be successful in your clinical OSCEs. As well as that, I've got a paediatrics range, so focusing on the high yield child with a mass for finals, high yield vomiting child, high yield congenital heart disease, high yield rashes for finals, high yield limping child, and also high yield genetic conditions for finals. In addition to that, I've got an obs and gynae edition, focusing on the high yield causes of chronic abdominal pain, high yield gynecological cancers, high yield acute abdomen, high yield obstetric emergencies, high yield STIs, and also I've got a cardiology edition focusing on atrial fibrillation for vinyls, pleuritic chest pain for vinyls, infective endocarditis for vinyls, aortic coarctation for vinyls, and high yield electrolyte disturbances with ECGs for vinyls. Now this video, amongst many others, will form part of my high yield quiz edition for finals. So today's video is looking at abdominal x-rays. I've got other videos such as CT head imaging, also high yield chest x-rays, high yield nerve palsies, and high yield rheumatological and orthopedic imaging. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to be going through 10 high yield abdominal x-rays for finals. I'll give you 10 seconds to formulate what you think the diagnosis is. So you can either pause the video at that point or you can wait 10 seconds and you'll be given the answer. So as long as you've got a pen and paper at the ready, let's get started. So this is number one and I'll give you 10 seconds for this one. Okay, let's find out the answer. Okay, so let's look at the answer. So this abdominal x-ray is an example of a patient presenting with hydronephrosis. So hydronephrosis is when there is obstruction or compression of the urinary tract. This increases the pressure of urine within the ureter and therefore it leads to a backflow of urine along the course of the ureter and also in the kidney itself. So the key aspect of hydronephrosis to remember is that it's due to obstruction or compression of the urinary tract leading to that backflow of urine. So the key finding that you need to find in hydronephrosis is the dilation of both the kidney and the ureter. So if you have a look at this abdominal x-ray, you can see that the right kidney and the right ureter appears more dilated, and that's the classical finding of hydronephrosis. Now the causes of hydronephrosis have been recorded in the far corner of the screen. So I use the mnemonic of PACT, so pelvic ureteric obstruction, aberrant renal vessels, calculi. This could either be ureteric calculi or renal calculi itself, increasing the pressure within the urinary tract leading to the accumulation of urine. And finally, T stands for tumours of the renal pelvis. So hopefully that's a nice little, little mnemonic that you can use to help remind you of some of the causes of hydronephrosis. So let's have a look at the second x-ray. So again, you can either pause the screen at this point or wait 10 seconds, it's up to you. Okay, let's find out the answer. So this is an example of a colorectal cancer. Now the key classic finding during an abdominal x-ray of colorectal cancer is what is known as the apple core sign. So if you have a look at the picture of the apple core that I've got on the corner of the screen and then have a look back at the abdominal x-ray, hopefully you can see the similarity and hopefully that will help you to remember future cases. Okay, so let's have a look at the next x-ray. Again, you can either pause the screen at this point or wait 10 seconds, it's up to you.
OK, let's have a look at the answer. So this is actually quite a subtle finding, but this example is of chronic pancreatitis. So the key finding here is that there's calcification of the pancreas. So calcification almost looks similar to fairy dust, if that makes sense, along the margin of the pancreas. It's quite a subtle finding, but hopefully after seeing this, I've done an x-ray, it'll put you in good stead for the exam. OK, let's have a look at the next one. Number four. So again, you can either pause the screen or wait 10 seconds. The choice is yours. OK, let's have a look at the answer. So this is an example of the lead pipe sign, which is found in ulcerative colitis. So lead pipe is a key classic finding of ulcerative colitis. So it represents a loss of haustra. And this is the very classic, typical exam style question that you will find concerning an abdominal x-ray with ulcerative colitis. If you got it wrong today, then don't worry. Hopefully you'll be able to recognize this come exam time. OK, so let's start for a look at the next question. So again, you can either pause the video or wait 10 seconds. It's up to you. OK, so let's have a look at the answer. So this is an example of a sigmoid volvulus, and this is a very key classic question which crops up time and time again for medical school final exams and also OSCEs in terms of bowel obstruction. So a sigmoid volvulus classically presents an abdominal x-ray with this coffee bean sign. And that's the key classic finding and key classic description that you'll find of sigmoid volvulus. And again, just be aware of this because it does come up time and time again in both SBAs for the knowledge paper and also in clinical OSCEs. OK, let's move on to the next question. So you can either pause the screen at this point or wait 10 seconds. It's up to you. OK, let's find out the answer. So this is an example of diverticular disease. Now, the key classic finding of diverticular disease is the fact that multiple diverticular is present along the length of the colon. And the best example of this I've encircled with this green circle. So hopefully, after looking at this abdominal x-ray, you'll feel more confident. Now, a complication of diverticular disease or a complication of diverticulosis is when you've got inflammation of the diverticular. The next step after diverticulosis is when a patient presents with diverticulitis. So that's when the inflamed diverticular ruptures. And when it ruptures, this creates a bowel perforation, causing free air and free gas to accumulate in the peritoneal cavity. And when you perform an erect chest x-ray, it presents with the classical finding of a pneumoperitoneum. Now, if you want to have a look at what a pneumoperitoneum presents like on an erect chest x-ray, then please have a look at my high yield chest x-ray quiz. But that's a very key exam SBA question that crops up concerning diverticular disease, diverticulosis and diverticulitis. So please just be familiar with all of these terms. OK, let's have a look at the next disease. So again, you can either pause the screen here or you can wait 10 seconds. OK, so this is an example of a gallstone ileus. So a gallstone ileus on an abdominal x-ray will present with the rigorous triad. So this is a triad of three key findings. So there'll be presence of pneumobilia, so that's the presence of air within the biliary tree. A radiolucent gallstone will be found and a small bowel obstruction will be present. So 
starting from the top and working our way to the bottom, we can see that there's air within the biliary tree, and that's known as pneumobilia. The air fluid level is used to emphasise the degree of small bowel obstruction in this abdominal x-ray. And finally, we can see the radiolucent gallstone because it's present right at the bottom of the screen and you can see that it's very lucent and it appears a chalky white colour. Okay, And a gallstone ileus is a very high yield question and it's also something that you need to be aware of because it could very easily present in clinical OSCE where you're asked to interpret an abdominal x-ray following an abdominal examination or it can present very easily as part of your knowledge exam paper so please be aware of this okay let's have a look at the next image so again you can wait 10 seconds or you can pause the screen it's up to you Okay, let's look at the answer. So this is an example of a sequel volvulus, and it's really important that you're able to distinguish between a sigmoid volvulus and a sequel volvulus, because these are two very typical exam questions that crop up time and time again in SBAs and also in clinical OSCEs if you've got an abdominal x-ray imaging station. So please just keep yourself familiar with both of the different types of volvuluses. OK, let's have a look at number nine. So you can pause the screen at this point or you can wait 10 seconds. OK, let's have a look at the answer. So this is a very key classic imaging of a patient presenting with a toxic megacolon. So a toxic megacolon has multiple causes, but the most common high yield causes of a toxic megacolon, which crops up time and time again in exams, are diseases such as ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, pseudomembranous colitis, and also ischemic colitis. So please be aware of this because it is a very high yield exam topic. So let's have a look at number 10, our final imaging quiz of the day. So again, you can either pause the screen at this point or wait 10 seconds, it's up to you. Okay, let's have a look at the answer. So this is an example of a small bowel obstruction. Now, small bowel obstruction classically presents on an abdominal x-ray with the presence of valvulae conniventes. So valvulae conniventes, to me, looks similar to a stack of coins. And I've got a picture of a stack of coins, so hopefully you can compare that with the valvulae conniventes, and hopefully that can be your point of reference when you're looking at an abdominal x-ray. Another key finding of small bowel obstruction that you need to be aware of is also something known as the stepladder sign. And I've got a picture of that in the far right hand corner and hopefully you can appreciate that stepladder sign by looking at the image. OK, so that marks the end of today's quiz. So I just wanted to say a huge thank you for staying with me and watching this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and Please can I ask you to like my channel, subscribe to my channel, and also post in the comment section below anything that you like or you didn't like in today's video. And please share with your family and your friends. So I wish you all the best with your exams and thank you very much for watching.